Good morning. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast this beautiful Friday morning, the 12th of February, the year 2021. I hope you had a very lovely night's rest and are ready to kickstart your day with, of course, the beautiful Aneta Felix and Sergei Oboa. It's okay to call men beautiful, though. Maybe. I don't think there's anything entirely wrong with it. It's fine, all right? If, if that's what you feel when you look at me. Oh, that's absolutely fine. don't get to in your head, Sergei. <laughs> Good morning. Thanks for joining us. We have, of course, a Friday morning edition of The Breakfast uh, here for you. Uh, different conversations here and there. Of course, we go through the newspapers at some point. That's what we start with and share with you the major stories making headlines across Nigeria today. Right after that, we'll tell you a little bit of what happened today in history many, many years ago. I am going back to 1909. And, and then uh, now our first uh, topical issue today on The Breakfast would be about STEM. Yesterday it was the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, Engineering, Tech and Mathematics field. So we'll be looking at what the Lagos State Government is doing with its STEAM UP project to make sure that girls, boys, everyone basically gets a chance to explore uh, the STEM field and make a difference you know, regarding tech and impacting our lives for the better. Absolutely, and right after that, will there be a protest tomorrow or not? That's a question everyone is asking. And what will the government's reaction be to it? Uh, the Minister of Information uh, put out a message yesterday, basically almost warning mm -hmm. Nigerians to stay indoors and not come out to protest. Yes. Because, um, according to him, the government will not allow the uh, destruction that has taken uh, place in the past protests uh, to reoccur, and the violence, rather, to reoccur. But, of course, on the other hand, there's people who say, we don't care about how you feel emotionally about this. This is not about your emotions or how you feel. This is about our rights mm -hmm. to protest. So will there be one tomorrow? And, of course, how do these things all play out? That is also going to be a part of our discussions uh, this uh, morning here on the Friday. Yes, and we'll also be talking about cryptocurrencies. It's been the subject of discourse since the federal government, you know, asked, you know, banks in the country to stop transactions with anyone, you know, with cryptocurrency accounts and all of that. And uh, they now summoned these, uh, the CBN governor to appear before the Senate to answer questions regarding this. So we'll be speaking to experts as well to make sense of this issue on The Breakfast. And of course, our condolences go to the family of uh, Latif Jaconde. Um, of course, uh, the whole of Lagos has been speaking about it. He passed away at the age of 91. He is uh, one of the names that you can never miss out on. When you talk about the history of Lagos State and the foundation of Lagos State, so we'll be paying respects to him and having a quick uh, conversation about his life, his times, and the contribution that he made to Lagos State at the time that, uh, of course, uh, he was in charge. So it's it's a lot of you know different discussions this morning, all of them looking very yes. exciting. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming. Are you in any <laughs> sort of boyfriend. panic? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sitting yeah. at home and lonely? <laughs> is she really yours? <laughs> Some of the oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> just trying to be sure, all right. Now, maybe I'll give you some signs that you may want to look out for. You can rent, you can rent, you can rent a girl, a guy for that day. I mean, it's all over social media, it's a DM away. Do you want them to make your ex feel jealous? You know, there's, there's just a lot you can do this period. Some signs to look out for to know whether Sunday will be good to you See, or not. Ignore this man. I'm going to tell you something if you're single this period. Just try to make the best of it and be happy because if you're not happy with yourself, if you're not contented with yourself, hallelujah, I feel the motivational speaking in me kicking out. If you're, you're not happy and contented with yourself, there is no way you'll be happy with someone else. So happiness, contentment starts Absolutely, within. Absolutely, Shakespeare. So, yeah, I know that, right? <laughs> you might be single and you don't know it. Just to let you know now. Oh my God. <laughs> Stay Prophet with us. of doom. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back after this short break. And of course, we're getting straight into the newspapers this morning. Uh, good morning once again. Good morning once again. Welcome to The Breakfast here on PLUS TV Africa. We always kick off with uh, going through the major stories, making headlines across the country this morning. And today we're starting with uh, the Nigerian Tribune. But before that, good morning to our guest who's joining us online, Mr. Jide Johnson, a senior lecturer at the Nigerian uh, University of Journalism. Uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to everybody. Breakfast is great. Let's start. Yes, it is. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So we're starting with the Nigerian Tribune this morning. The big one you can see there, of course, uh, is on banditry. Governors agree to end open grazing. Latif Jaconde dies at 91 uh, for burial today. 
Also, cryptocurrency, Senate summons CBN governor, uh, SEC DG. Buhari offers automatic employment and scholarship to 110 ex core members. No protest tomorrow. Federal government, Lagos government, police warn Occupy Lekki proponents. And also, uh, I'm not sure if there's going to, they're going to give a specific date when there's, there can be a protest. So, well, 101-year-old woman survives COVID-19 at the OAUTHC. Um, and these are the big ones. Uh, of course, so we're talking of climate change also as a follow-up to the uh, open grazing story. It says climate change forcing headsmen into Nigeria. Migration down south, says uh, Ganduji. Autumn writes, Buhari says, push for justice and equity, not a fight against Fulani. 4,000 headers from south have arrived in Kaduna, semi-sane. An uh, invasion of my home by headers. Police lied, Wale Shoinka says. Uh, and the last one, of course, insecurity. We are completely unsafe. And that is from Afeni Fair. All right, Mr. Jide Johnson, there's so many of them. Uh, pretty interesting. The cryptocurrency, the Senate, someone in the CBN governor and um, Security, and, Security and Exchange Commission, DG. Uh, that's a, an interesting one. And, of course, uh, the story on um, the protesting, government saying no protest tomorrow. Will there be one approved for next week then? Please go ahead. Well, uh, well I would like to start uh, by bringing condolences to the family of the former governor of the Lagos State and genitor of Nigerian of journalism, and someone that I believe has done much more for Nigerian journalism than he has ever been celebrated. That's Alaji Latif, Jack Ondewu was instrumental to the establishment of Nigeria Institute of Journalism in partnership with International Press Institute in Geneva. I think that God will grant the family fortitude to bear the loss. And the legacy he left behind be a challenge for those that are priding themselves as leaders and in public sphere um, today that um, the picture he left behind, even in his lifetime, did not be able to feel that, that, that big. That big shoot. Many, most of us in our generation, if not for a Latin, a large Latin, that could have gone to secondary school, talk alone of going to, 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 to the university. He's so interesting. In perfect, he's celebrating without knowing. And that's for a large. On the issue of um, banditry, that governors agreed to end open grace. Uh, we saw what led to Boko Haram in the North. East, what has bedeviled the North West, the banditry, killing, and kidnapping as a result of cattle rustling and the rest of it. And we are seeing how it has moved to the North Central, and we see how it has moved to, 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 to the Southwest and the Southeast. How do governors sleep at night? And then how do they justify the security goals? They, 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 they collect on monthly basis that can never be investigated, that can never be audited. How do they justify that? Must it get to the point that people will lose their lives and property before they come to the realization of saying that, look, we are going to ban, we are going to ban open, open prison. I think the government should wake up to their responsibility and to the oath of office, which they swore. Now, to the CPN being summoned by the state Senate, I, uh, some of us have advocated that what would be good for democracy is for the party that controls the executive, not to control the legislature. In the, the last legislative assembly, even though it was from the same party, but from the different purpose, we saw a different approach in terms of executive and legislative interaction and relationship. We saw a, 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 a more robust engaging, rather than this rubber stamp um, national assembly that we have as a night national I'm looking forward to where the, the newly appointed ambassador, the security chiefs, that refused to appear before the Senate, whether they will appear before the Senate for their confirmation. I'm waiting for the Senate to confirm them. Then he will tell you the scorecard of this particular Senate. How will Central Bank quickly come up with a policy, a policy that could destroy the economy, a policy that could destroy the lives, without first going through committee and without first briefing the legislature? These are the policy we want to do. Just wake up in the morning, you appear before the pages of this paper, or you call a press conference, or you issue a press statement, you disrupt the entire the entire economy. Hopefully, we get something positive right. out of it. But and when they get to the Senate, I can assure you that there's nothing we are going to We are not going to see anything out of it. What have we seen concerning the proof in MPC? What have we seen concerning the issue of minimum wage? 
different probes that have been undertaken by this person, like us. What have we achieved uh, concerning that? Right. The last time, uh, on the PIP, the public hearing, they call on petroleum industry. Have been, they were people are beating themselves from those communities. But what what will be the achievement of Femi Bajabi Amila and Senator Ahmed Lawa at the end of this night? National, we are waiting to we are waiting to see what they achieve concerning that. All right. Okay, let's now turn to the Punch newspaper this morning. The story here says Lekki Toll Gate. FG Lagos police talk tough as organizers vow protest will hold. Organizers say we won't allow Lekki Toll Gate reopening. It's blood money. On the other hand, Lagos says we will not allow states to be pushed by Carnage Edge again. We lack power to audit NNPC, CB, and others, and that's the Auditor General of the Federation. Senate summons MFLA, Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission over cryptocurrency ban. Bauchi Governor Lambast's Southern Colleagues, Autumn, says herders AK-47 for defense. NIN, mandatory for bank accounts, voter registration, FG. This one here says, Heads, many invaded my property, Shrinka replies, police. Or your plans converting Lautech to conventional university. Police probe Igongon farmer's death, say diseased, not shot. Buhari, Obasanjo, governors, others mourn as Jokande dies at 91. Pastor, age 72, arrested for defiling 13-year-old girl. Self-styled lawyer impregnates teenager. Schools, hospitals shot as herdsmen attack Ogun communities, Q2. Mr. Didi Johnson, so many interesting stories here on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Uh, let's start with the one that is Punch. FG Lagos Police Doctor um, Bao No that people will not protest. Protest is a fundamental part of democracy. Vandalism and destruction of property is a criminal act. Now, it is my right in a democratic society to protest if I feel like protesting. As long as my protest does not infringe or infringe on other people's, other people's um, rights and whatever. And then uh, you see the, how quickly the police, the states, and the federal government respond to issue that is good for building democratic society. Majority will always have their way, but the minority must have their say. That's the beauty of democracy. They quickly jump at preventing people from giving expressions to their alternative views in the society. On our and reacting to protecting the lives and properties of Nigerians. I hope the police, the federal government will talk tough and react swiftly, like they have reacted with the issue of, of the protest plan for tomorrow, the way they, are, they, have, re they, 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 they have reacted to the issue of uh, It seems we're having a bit of an issue with uh, his line, but I think what he was trying to say is that he, he senses a bit of bias in the way the you know government responds to issues, yeah. how they've been slow and you know dragging their feet when it comes to you know the farmers' head is clash and how swiftly it seems they've responded to this protest you know against the reopening of the Lekki Toll Gate. Well, once we can get back, uh, back uh, Mr. Judy Johnson would uh, get more of his thoughts on that. People might also argue that the government hasn't necessarily been dragging their feet um, with the heads you know Heather's crisis. <coughs> and yes, they could have done better. Um, and the body lang their body language always looks very, very, um, you know, offbeat with regards, um, you know, their approach towards head as, you know, sometimes it seems like they're giving excuses for, for the headsmen and for the, you know, bandits. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, once, you know, there's someone who decides, oh, I want to peacefully protest, okay. they immediately bring out the hammer. So the body language just seems entirely off. Yes, we um, have uh, Didi Johnson back on here now. Thank you very much for still being here. <clears throat> Would you like to shed more light on your thoughts on, on another issue? There's this one here says, police, I beg your pardon, pastor, yeah. 72. Uh, that, 
Yeah, let's take the issue of a Nobel laureate. Nigeria should be very careful because okay. what type of image will he give to this nation if something untoward happens to Professor Wali Shunka? Now, he said, Ed's men invaded my home. Police said, no, Ed's men did not invade your home. Now, the police that is swift to prepare, to forestall any protest, are not swift in protecting the lives and property of an average, an average Nigerian. It's, it's, it's sad. It, it's, it's sad. If these people swore an oath of office to defend the territorial integrity of Nigeria, number one, Number two. Oh, back so, in that so. network issue. Let's try and see if we can get him on a phone call, maybe. And uh, back to, to this issue. There's this, this one that really caught my attention on the punch. It says, 72 year old pastor arrested for defiling 13 year, a 13 year old girl, and a self styled lawyer impregnates a teenager. I saw the picture of this pastor, so to speak, yesterday, and it was very sad. And it's just so worrisome how, how much, basically, how, how much respect or so we've, we've, we've put or trust, so to speak, we've put on some of these pastors. Because when you listen to stories of young girls talking about how they were raped by a pastor, you find out that it's the belief of the parents that something spiritually wrong or there's something wrong spiritually with your child, with child and they need some deliverance, some spiritual intervention. And, you're, and you hand over your, your child, your teenager, to an old man, a pastor in his house it really for just, deliverance sessions. It's, it, it doesn't make sense. It really just um, is a reminder that you know, the society that we live in, no, nobody can be truly trusted you know, 100%. And that includes pastors, it includes uncles and aunties, it, it includes house helps and neighbors. Nobody um, should get, have that level of trust you know, that you can leave your child in their care entirely that way. Um, and also a reminder to us that the law doesn't pick and choose whether you're a pastor or you are a lecturer or you are a bus conductor. It should be, you know, the same laws that, you know, that cover everybody and the same, um, you know, uh, justice system, basically, that, you know, um, covers everyone. And so if a pastor, regardless of what, what church he leads, is accused of rape or accused of sexual assault, he should be made to face, definitely, um, you know, the full wrath of the law. Uh, Judy Johnson, welcome back. Um, apologies, uh, the network doesn't seem to be on our side this morning. Um, can you can, go on with your thoughts? Yeah, it's one of the reality of our time. On the issue of um, two days ago, I was taking a stroke in my neighbor, and I saw a cleric teaching teaching girls, young girls. They all sat on the mat, and I told my friend, and I said, and it was getting late in the night, and I said, why would the parents send his or her child to go and learn about religious stuff at this hour of the day with a male guy and the the young guests were squatting and kneeling in front of the cleric and he was teaching them. I said, what kind of picture would be playing on in the mind of this cleric? I said, this is, this is danger. Like you said, while I was off the network, that it's the parents that unknowingly, out of sheer religious stupidity, that turns their children to be prey because they send them for deliverance. They send them to go and learn something about, about, about religion and stuff like that. And they expose their children little by little to danger. And these children cannot report to their parents because this cleric imposed themselves as an authority figure in the position of God that cannot be questioned. The parents shiver before this cleric. So when the children see the parents shiver before this cleric, they see they worship this cleric. How would the children too react or will be able to tell their parents what they are going through? I think we need a complete orientation when it comes to the issue of, of, of religion and exposing our children to, to, all, right. to, to all of these uh, menace of predators parading themselves as religious clerics. All right, with the short time that we have left, I want you to, of course, go to, let's go to the Daily Independent uh, this morning. Uh, the big one, you can see there says, uh, hashtag Occupy Lekki Tollgate. Federal government vows to stop planned protests. Uh, we would resist NSAS protesters, Lagos government and CP um, are saying. Next time cattle invade my place, uh, police will be invited to join Suya Feast. <laughs> that is from Wally Shoinka. 
All right, prayers alone won't solve Nigeria's problems, uh, clerics uh, are saying. And also, Nigeria, Dubai, and Passe intensifies as UAE bans all flights. Uh, Senate summoned CBN Governor DGSEC over cryptocurrency directive. Buhari, Lawan, Tinubu, Songwo, Lu, Fire Me, and others mourn Latif Jakonde. And also, on, uh, once again, Sunday, Boho, headsmen storm Ogun community in reprisal, key to, uh, kill two for missing. Um, Mr. Jilly Johnson, we have just a few minutes left. I want you to quickly um, respond to this question. Do you think the federal government and the legal state government, you know, is, is you know, okay to say that the violence that occurred in the last protest, you know, is enough reason for protests to, of course, be stopped because they don't think that they want a repeat of that. And, uh, you know, the, the damage was just too much. You know, and, of course, it's best... To be then, safe. Then the government should provide government will provide security for those that want to peacefully protest. Government should provide security for those that want to peacefully protest and should arrest those that want to cause mayhem. You agree with me that those that caused the mayhem were not those that actually went to let to protest. And um, you also agree with me that. We are sitting on a keg of, keg of gunpowder in the sense that there is huge restiveness. There is unemployment. Life has become hard and untold for many Nigerians. So a lot of people have a lot of pent up emotions. And don't also forget that we are coming out of a lockdown that kept a lot of people at home without any form of palliative from government. And the palliatives that even the government have were kept in warehouses by politicians and their cronies and were not given to the people that actually need it. So, tying the protest to the vandalism that bedeviled the Elsa's protest is reductionism. Is is what has as has there been any prosecution? I'm asking you. Has there been one person prosecuted and sent to jail for vandalism? There were places that were CCTV. <clears throat> we saw a situation whereby people in Alausa were scattered. They were peacefully protesting. Alausa were scattered by talks. They were running the task shelter. We have images of, of people holding knives. Have they been arrested? Government should not be paying lip service. You see, look, if we don't address issues, once issues are not attended to over time, it turns to a crisis. And we are sitting on a dead of gunpowder. Whether government likes it or not, let them be paying lip service to it. We need to address the issue of unemployment. We need to address the issue of equity. We need to address the issue of justice. We need to assess the issue of access to opportunities for all within, within the nation. And if we don't address this issue, and economic hardship is biting the people hard, and the, the gap between the haves and the have-nots is becoming widening, widening, widening by the day, and for you to make a leeway, is either you are a politician, or you are a crony of a politician, or you are associated to one political matter, I can assure you that we are just... We are just we are just postponing the good day when it comes to dealing with this issue. Let people that want to protest, protest, provide them with security, arrest hoodlums, prosecute them, send them to jail. The, yesterday, Obalin Day was on fire as a result of activities of a government within a government. I've never seen anywhere in the world where you have an institution like the National Union of Road Transport Workers will be collecting tolls, will be collecting rates. They are a government within a government, and government has not dealt with that. And they are saying that it is people that protested that cost me. We knew what cost me. Whose business is threatened by BRT? Me, that drives my private car, or you that drives a private car, or those that enter Uber, or those that die, those that enter Uber. Whose business is threatened by BRT buses? They said BRT. Who are, who are those that have issues with Federal Road Safety Corps? Who have issues? With um, VIU, vehicle inspection officers. Who are those? Those are the offices that were set in place. Those are the businesses that were destroyed. Forget that's the starting point. When riots, when when protests are not controlled, there's no doubt that vandalism All right. will, 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 will fall out of it because the security agents do not do what they are supposed they are supposed to do. So they should not reduce the vandalism, destruction of lives and property that happened after the shooting in Lekki to the protest in Lekki. Oh. That's reductionism. That's a, that's People a, that have failed to do their responsibility 
should understand that in civilized climate, they will have resigned today. Thank you. It's an ongoing conversation. And have a wonderful weekend. Course, sir. You, you too, too, sir. Thank you so Thank much you. for your time this morning. Thank Always you. interested speaking with you. Yeah. All right. Uh, the conversation continues definitely tomorrow. Uh, we will, of course, uh, we'll be following up and seeing what um, or how that turns out. I'm on duty tomorrow, uh, so I'm definitely going to be driving through that uh, toll gate. Hopefully, it's, uh, it's going to be open for usage. Um, and of course, if protesters are there, we'll definitely bring you live footage from there and uh, let you know how it is going. Uh, for now, we'll take a short break. When we come back today in history, what happened in 1909? It's something about the NAACP. We'll be back.